With the lighting in orange of the Monument of Independence in Kiev and other sites in 16 cities, Ukraine begins its participation in 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. The campaign aims to increase awareness of the problem that is especially serious in Ukraine, where an estimated 90% of gender-based violence is against women. Statistically, every fourth woman in Ukraine has experienced violence. In 2016, Anastasia Melichenko started the hashtag I'm not afraid to say campaign that emboldened women around Ukraine to tell their stories of violence and harassment against them. With the feedback she had, she concluded that the problem goes well beyond statistics. Women often do not seek help at the police, for example, because unfortunately we have a culture of victim blaming. A person may ask for help and face very powerful psychological pressure. People may tell her, you are guilty yourself, why would you put on such short dress or something else? Women are often silent. There is also a problem when women seek help from domestic violence and the police may not even take on such a case. They may say that these are your family affairs, why would you wash your dirty laundry in public? That's why I think that these statistics are understated in Ukraine. In reality, the problem is very big. The government has been active in dealing with the problem. It has financed a national hotline for victims of domestic violence, worked on rehabilitation for victims and correction for perpetrators of domestic violence. Although there are shelters for people in difficult living conditions, specialized shelters for women are just being created. We are just starting to create specialized shelters. For example, such a shelter was created a year ago in Kharkiv. We turned to the city council to allocate a building, and they did it promptly. And a respected organization, the United Nations Population Fund, provided funds for the building repair. The shelter functioned almost a year at the expense of the fund, and now the city council has made a decision to finance it from the local budget. For me, this is the best model. When the resources of an international organization allowed to create, the authorities provided a building. And now they take responsibility for financing, for solving the problem. UN representative Neil Walker emphasizes on the prevention of gender-based violence through activism and education. It is also important for Ukraine to ratify the Istanbul Convention that combats the problem, he says. In a number of countries around the world, the most successful campaigns have actually been young boys. Young boys making videos saying how, no, it's not acceptable, showing themselves stopping other boys from carrying out violence against women. So we think that uh, engaging men and boys is important. We think that legislation such as the Istanbul Convention is important. We think that changing attitudes and support to the victims. Ultimately, this costs Ukraine. Uh, the days that women lose uh, to work because of violence, the cost to the society of such violence, it's very, very high. So we hope that uh, with some of these steps we'll make progress against this problem. For 16 days until December 10th, the International Day of Human Rights, UN agencies as well as Ukrainian government organizations and NGOs will host over 200 events to educate and raise awareness about gender-based violence. The slogan with which they started the campaign is United Against Violence. Yeah. Артур Корнієнко, for UATV.